All right, here's like our 25th lecture. Now we're gonna discuss, start with a discussion. So if we have alpha, right? That is a smooth function, mass of RQ to RN. And we know that it induced a transformation, right? This, we talked about it in lecture 22 or 21st, right? It maps from here to here, right? Tangent vectors. And T, if it's a linear map, it gives a, a linear, uh, a dual transformation, right? So it's a, like a pullback. It's a pullback on alternating tensors. So if we combine the, these two, it gives a map of a star. And this alpha star, it preserves all structure we impose on forms. So it imposes vector space structure, it, it preserves wedge product, and also differential operators. Okay? So let us make a definition of this function first. So if alpha is a smooth function, we let B open Rn contains the image. We define a dual transformation on alternating on, on forms, right? It's on forms, so that you take a form on B and maps to a form on A. Well, this is called dual transformation of forms. So such that we define that if F is a zero form on B to R, we define a zero form on A by this. Okay. Now, if omega is an L form on B, we define the L form on A, right? Such that this so is a form, right? You have L vectors, it's an L form, then it maps to this. Okay. So this X, right, is from A. And omega is a four on B, so this is in B, right? So it makes sense. Omega is a four on B, and those vectors, right? So it makes this to L form on A. Oops, sorry. Okay. So here we have a note. First, we let f is equal to y. So for t, if we define t to be this map, right? Then t star the dual map will be the alpha from here right back to here right so if omega is l form on b then omega y is the l form right on what rn right okay so right because omega if omega is l form on b right then omega y is in this set, in this set, right? Omega y. And then t star of omega y is equal to alpha star omega x. So here's the justification. Take these v vectors, and right. Then you, by definition, it gives you this. Here you change y to f of x, right? So you have these inputs, and these are like just t of them, and t is equal to this, right? And we observe this entire thing is by definition equal to this. So they are equal, right? And now we have a, we have a theorem. So this is a theorem. So those are the initial conditions. Rk to Rm, C infinity. Uh, beta is from B is open to Rm. So Rm to Rn, smooth map. And we have, these are your forms from C to Rn. So here's like a diagram. So Rk, Rm, Rn, right? This is alpha and this is beta and omega and theta goes away. So that's like A, B, C open sets, okay? All right. 
the if omega and theta have the same order, this transformation up there, dual transformation, we have these three followings. So notice this one. The proof is by here. We know that the dual transformation, right? It is speaking in language of forms. Each form is a element of a vector space, right? Then we know that this is linear. So it gives this, right? And we know this, which is exactly equal to this. And for the second one, for the second one, the second one is this property of 28.1. We have this. We'll go back directly, which is exactly equal to this, right? Okay. So this means that this preserves vector space structure, right? And also the wedge product. It's a very good thing. Okay, now we keep on going. Going to the next one. You're gonna need this formula for next theorem. So here's like initial definition, x general point rk, y general point rn, and those are the elements of one forms. Then we have these two formulas. So first, so this formula is like, you have alpha star i is d alpha i. So you pick y is, right, it is equal to this one. It's easy to memorize. Okay, so just prove this first. So first we have y equal to alpha x. Then we compute alpha star d y and alpha st and alpha star d y. Okay, so we first com calculate this one, okay, on this, then this is equal to this, right, alpha x, right, y equal to alpha x, and this one, well, this, um, is the ith component of this one. Because remember this one, right? It's like a projection mapping to the ith component of this. Right? Okay. Now this is like the 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 formula for this. And Vj is equal to this. This is equal to this. So can split them up and also so we have this one right this function is equal to this right this function is equal to this but this again is d alpha i by theorem 30.3 the on right on zero forms, right? Zero form can be expressed as a linear combination of a scalar function, as a linear combination of elementary one forms, okay? And for B, is a bit longer. So if I is a ascending k-tuple from this, then we have this formula, okay? So this formula. So this is basically yi is from one to k, but this is alpha i, which is the i k row, okay? D1, x1, x k, so this is like the i1, i2, i k row, right? Of, of, the, of the Jacobian matrix, okay? Okay, so this is, because this is a k form, an open set of RK by our initial definition, right? Then this is equal to this, and where H is a scalar function. And we know that we we know that HX is equal to this evaluated on E1 to EK, right, on basis. So, and we do a bunch of calculation. So here we use the definition, right? And here we compute them. 
right? And we realize those, and by those, is exactly the determinant of this, and which is by this, so we're done, okay? So we also know that the alpha star preserves the differential operation. Okay, so here's like easy to remember, yeah. And for two, for this one, is basically this one because it preserves wedge product, right? And each of them by part part A, right? They can be changed to this one. And for this one, it preserves wedge, wedge uh, no, it preserves uh, the differential operation. Look, the clad is the move function, and omega is the L form defined in Rn regarding alpha A. Then we know that we can pull the differential operator outside so we have this okay so this one it requires a bit effort so here's our initial definition x is in rk y is in rn we first we verify for zero forms and for the positive order we just consider omega to be like this because this these two are linear okay so verify the zero form first. This we know that by we can expand it like this. And because alpha star is linear, we can put it in. And it becomes this. So this is by part A and this is by the definition. Okay. So we've done this part and then we do this part. So this is equal to this, right? And well, equal this by the theorem, and we know this one we can do chain rule, right? So we do we do some observation and calculation, and turn out to be equal to this. And now we substitute it back, so it gives this thing. Okay, but this thing, it observed that for this, you j evaluated on all the j's, right? So this thing turns out to be equal to d of phi i, okay? And this, and this, notice that they're the same, so they agree. So we verify the on zero form case. Now we go on positive order, as I said before, right? Then, um, this becomes something like this, and the preserved wedge product, so we can split it up, and also, right, we calculate this part, and then we also calculate this one. And this one, we just do some simple calculation, we do by the, and observe this one is equal to those. And those are equal to zero by the, in the proof of the wedge product, right? In the proof of which part that we prove some result that is like this one. Okay, so we have this vanishes, right? This vanishes, and this becomes equal to it, which is keep this turn down. But notice that those two are equal because we have verified zero zero form cases, right? So these two are equal, and we're done. Okay. So here we conclude the, the properties on such special mapping. We're gonna need this in our future, so let's end it here.